Hello, today I wanted to share with you one thing that really helped me a lot lately and that is going to be very valuable for you, especially if you use Stripe and if you used to send emails or if you send emails to, uh, to your customers uh, when the payment fails. Uh, one reason of why it's very important to do that is it's a bit like a card abandonment type of situation. The person goes on your Stripe link, try to pay, payment fails, and you know, there's no automation in place. There's nothing in place to make sure that you kind of bring back the customer and make it pay properly with the right credit card and a credit card that works. So I used to do that manually. I used to check in my Stripe account how like every, uh, every few days um, who had a failed payment. And I used to, I used to send an email saying, telling them, okay, your payment failed. Here's a reason why the, that the, the, the the bank or the card gave gave us and let me know if you need any help um and i was actually realizing that i could be losing opportunities by not being fast enough to you know send that email the same reason as you know if if you have a card, card abandonment email uh you want to send it kind of soonish so it the product is in their mind. They're still in the process of maybe still buying. So you want to do that. And let me show you what I've done and how it works. So I use this platform called Pabli Connect. Make that, make that bigger for you guys. So it's called Pabli Connect. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and what I've done is pretty much very simple. I am getting a webhook from Stripe and Actually, let me show you uh, in Stripe. All right, so in Stripe, uh, in test mode, you want to add an endpoint. I mean, I do it in test mode because I like to do things in test mode before going live. That should be what you should do as well. But you know, um, you do you if you don't want to do that. Uh, it's, <laughs> you can be, uh, you can do that, whatever. Um, and you know, you add an endpoint, you add the URL, and then you add a description. And then for the event here, select event you want to add um, payment or actually fail. I'm going to search failed and it's called payment intent dot payment failed. Uh, and then you get that, you click on add event. And then when, when, once you have your endpoint working, you can go back to Zapier, uh, not Zapier. Wow. <laughs> I'm so brainwashed, <laughs> Pabli connect. Um, and yeah, so yeah. In in uh, in Pabli, you have your your uh, your your webhook URL, and then you're gonna receive data for payment that failed. And if you want to get that data, it's very simple. What you have to do, you just have to have a product, and if you have Stripe test cards, and then you have your test cards, and you want to have you know decline decline payments. And can use this very generic card number for you. Um, yeah, four zero 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 two. Simple. And then that will trigger the webhook that we just created. Uh, yeah, the webhook that we just created here. And then it will. Um, when you will try to do that, you you just have to you know to use a uh, payment link and you use that and you enter the credit card here. No, four zero 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 two, and then uh, that will create you know this uh, this uh, response here, this one. So that is set, and then once you once you have done, when, once you have you know uh, made a test payment that will have failed, you will see in payments overview, you will see failed like that. And then when if you click on it, you're gonna see payment in decline by the issuing bank. So there's no like valid reason in a way. Uh, it doesn't give like a proper explanation. And but still you want to get that information to the, the customer. So you have that information here. Second thing you wanna do here, but that hit my face there. Second thing you wanna do uh, now is you want to have a, an API call to get information. So you want to get the uh, you know API Stripe charge and then the customer ID here, 
then it will give you more details. But then because it doesn't give you what was the um, invoice item, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you, oh, where is it? Here. No, wait. Here, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't tell you like what product was it like? It doesn't tell you this. It just tells you like, okay, payment failed. Here's the amount of the charge, blah, blah, blah. So you want to have a checkout sessions to check all of the sessions of that specific customer that you will get. So you enter the uh, authorization, the customer here. Then I will give you here all of the, uh, that will give you the last checkout session, which is what you want. Because, you know, if you follow the flow, you have first, you get a notification of failed payment. Then here you get the, the charge details. And with the charge details, you want to get the, you know, that gives you the customer ID. With the customer ID, you then use that to check the last checkout session of that customer, which if it all makes sense, you know, because that just happened as the last one, unless the person had literally spam click the button, uh, which will probably not happen or Stripe will block them, um, you know, that will be the last transaction. And you will have the checkout session here. And with that, you use that checkout session and you ask to get the line items. And with that, you can then, you have the line item test. Oh, also one thing that is important here is limit one. Um, I mean, it's not important, but that will complicate your life much more if you have multiple item lines. And usually that's, you know, when you create an invoice for a client and that's done more manually. If you person buy a, buy a product, that's usually one thing. Uh, but you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, yes, you do things differently. But anyway, the point is you have one item, you have the description here, you have what it is, the description of this product. And then because you want to be able to send an email in a way that is more authentic ish, uh, you want to get the name of the person, which would be, you know, here's test, but let's say it's like John Doe, there's a space. So you want to split John and Doe, you want to get just the first one to just get John. And with that, you now have John here instead of test, for example. And then what you do, you send an email. And that's very simple. Here you have, you know, all right, test. I'm, that's that you want to send the, you want to test, the, you want to send the email to the customer and then you send, you decide who is sending it. That's going to be me. And then, I mean, you in that case, but here it's me. And then here you have the, the name for me, for me, I like to, to like to use a very simple thing, test product, the name of the product that they bought, payment failed. And then I have the HTML here that says what it is all about. So it's very, 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 very straightforward. And yeah, that's pretty much it actually. So you have the email says, hey, and on this our Stripe dashboard, in our Stripe dashboard that your payment for the product has failed. It says, you know, here there was two, two things. One was from, if I go back here, Stripe tells you, okay, uh, da -da, scroll down, we're gonna see it, yeah, there we go. The last payment error, it says your card was declined, but then that doesn't say much. And with the session, if I'm not wrong, it's gonna be here, yeah. With the, um, the charge detail that you get from, uh, from the, uh, the Stripe. So again, Stripe, charge, checkout session, checkout session items, and then you have all of the details. Then here in that uh, charge, it says the bank did not return any further details with the decline. So you use, I personally use that in, in, the, uh, in the email. And then I put that in italic to like kind of highlight it in a way. And then after, after that is let me know if you need any uh, assistance any of, uh, if, you, if you can be of any assistance. And that's it. That's very, very like, I don't want to say simple, but it's very straightforward and in, in how it works. I hope it was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I am here for you. If you like that video, definitely like, comment, follow, whatever pleases you. 
I am happy to, you know, make more of those videos and that will definitely give me a bit of motivation if I get um, a bit of uh, traction from it, if you can say, or engagement, you know, putting videos in the, in the dark, it's a bit boring. Anyway, uh, see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.